The Accent On Air Summer Event Guide has all the details about how you can engage with your faith, a men's conference, fundraising dinners, and a Roman Catholic car cruise. Bishop Kulik celebrates masses around the Diocese of Greensburg. He's everywhere. Coming up, how you can join from anywhere. Plus, pastors talk about the importance of being present for the Eucharist, the steps each parish is taking to make sure the return to in-person worship is safe. Welcome to the Accent on Air. I'm Jennifer Mealy. Bishop Kulik is on the road, on the pulpit, and on computers across the Diocese of Greensburg, streaming liturgies in Armstrong, Fayette, Indiana, and Westmoreland counties, including right here at Immaculate Conception Parish in Irwin, where he was once assigned as parochial vicar, and they never forgot his impact on this church. He was the same as he is now. He's never changed. He was just, he would do anything he needed to do. And he was there for everyone and we loved him then and we love him now. <laughs> I want to sincerely thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be here with you today, to celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, to return back here to Immaculate Conception Parish, which holds a very special place in my heart, as Father mentioned, having served here two years, seeing many familiar faces uh, in the congregation today. Bishop Larry Kulik, in his first few months as the newly ordained and installed sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg, is celebrating masses in every corner of the diocese. He opted to start visiting parishes with the capabilities to stream mass, not just to their own parishioners, but to the faithful throughout Western PA. Why did you decide to provide that hybrid experience? Well, first of all, by having what we're sort of terming a hybrid pastoral visitation, we started those visits with parishes that had the ability to live stream, ensuring the health and safety of all of those who are gathering. So we thought this was a wonderful opportunity, a way in which I could be physically present and also allow those who are not able to come to church to be a part of that experience and also to really have an opportunity to see other parishes. For pastors at each of the parishes, this was an opportunity to talk about a safe return to worship. If you are vaccinated and starting to feel more comfortable venturing out, church is where we need to be. Watching live stream mass is the exception, not the norm. So I would encourage you to pray about coming back to be physically present for the celebration of Sunday Eucharist. The physical presence of our community gathered in prayer has always been a critical component of our faith. I am so proud of our parishes, our pastors, our staff, our volunteers and parishioners, both in our parishes and in our schools. We have remained open. We have allowed people to have opportunities for in-person worship. We've continued to grow in our virtual platforms and the number of parishes offering virtual experiences. And I have extreme confidence that the protocols and procedures that we've put in place uh, allow parishioners to be in one of the safest environments when they gather publicly. For a complete list of streaming masses from around the diocese, visit theaccentonline.org. For anyone considering a return to in-person worship, it's important for you to know that our parishes take sanitization very seriously. In many parishes, they've even started a cleaning ministry. I went on assignment to Holy Family Parish in Latrobe to learn more about their efforts during the pandemic. Although the last year has been different and difficult through this coronavirus pandemic, I'm very proud the efforts of our parish this past year. The safety and the sanctification of our community is our primary concern. And so, after the pandemic hit, we took into consideration um, and put into effect the advice and guidance of our diocese and our health officials to create a clean and safe environment here at Holy Family so that we could minister to our community and worship as, as parishioners, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of the things I would like to highlight first would be our meal ministry. I was really excited to see that soon after the, the pandemic hit and we went into lockdown, 
A number of our parishioners came together, they became Safe Serve certified, and they began to cook and provide meals to members of our community weekly, hundreds of meals. We initially figured we would, we would do it for people who couldn't financially make it because of they, they were either out of work or, or whatever. And then we figured too that there's people who have been quarantined and don't go out and maybe just need to get out and, and get a, a, a meal that they didn't have to cook and maybe even see some people while they're picking it up. I really enjoyed my time outside handing out the meals. I got to meet so many people from the Lake Trobe neighborhood. People would come on foot. People would come in their cars. They would sit for an hour and a half at least waiting for us to bring the food out. Uh, they would park along Ligonier Street as far as the eye could see. The people who came to help in the kitchen, they were all very happy to be here. It gave them a purpose. It gave them, I think, great joy to be able to help other people. Holy Family Parish was one of several parishes highlighted in the Be the Light Appeal, a fundraising effort to support parishes, schools, missions, and ministries during the pandemic. Prayerfully consider participating in what we call the Diocesan Lenten Appeal. Even a small gift can go a long way. Visit dioceseofgreensburg.org slash be the light and be the light for your faith community. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, parishioners at St. Mary Mother of God in Freeport have responded to the call for assistance from their pastor, Monsignor Gilbert Hente, helping to exceed their fundraising goal for the diocesan Lenten appeal by more than $100,000 in pledges. Their foundation of faith is now helping to shore up the foundation of the church itself. Our church was built in 1849 and um, it has the original foundation of sandstone. Uh, without a strong foundation, the building could not even stand the test of time. Everyone is also very important to be part of that foundation. They have this undying love for this uh, beautiful church, not only materially, but also spiritually. So this year's project is to reinforce and re-seal uh, the entire foundation of our Parish church basement and with the grace of God and the love of our parishioners we not only met our target of wanting to raise $50,000 for the project but we've reached nearly a hundred thousand dollars over the diocesan target. I'm Paul Patera. Car lovers get ready. There are plenty of summer car cruises on the calendar in the Diocese of Greensburg including one with the bishop himself. Those cars will be cruising in this parking lot in September. I'm Jordan Wyko. Stay tuned to learn about in-person events to engage you in your faith. Even right now, I'm a senior graduating in college, like out of St. Vincent. I want to do my four years here again. That's how, that's how much I love this place. I've like had so many experiences and I've met so many wonderful people here. And I'm just so thankful that they've like helped me grow into who I am now. St. Vincent is just a place where if you're here, you're just magnetized toward positivity and openness and kindness to people. It's just what happens and that's why, I mean, that's what a home is. So that's why St. Vincent's my home. I had to pack up all my things. I had to leave my home. And I never knew where I was going next. It felt like I never even had a say. But then you came along. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. Learn how you can help at casaforchildren.org. More than $4 million in tuition assistance is now available for Catholic schools in the Diocese of Greensburg. Become a top student today. Visit catholicschoolsguide.org. Ford Business Machines technicians are never satisfied with anything less than perfection. Which is better, one or two? They take the time to fully understand the scope of the issue and make it crystal clear that you will be able to view your documents at a level that you should expect. Now which is better? That's the one right there. Don't settle for less when it comes to your company's image. 
Call today for a well-defined analysis of your current picture. Welcome back to the Accent On Air Summer Event Guide. Bishop Kulik may be the new leader of our diocese, but he's been serving here his entire life with assignments in Indiana, Armstrong, and Westmoreland County, including right here at Immaculate Conception Parish in Irwin. Paul Patera shows us how his most recent parishioners said goodbye to Monsignor Kulik and hello to their new bishop. The church hosted a goodbye drive through on January 31st, allowing people the chance to chat with him before he was ordained and installed as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg on February 11. Visitors were not just limited to St. James parishioners. Matt and Jen Mincucci and their six-year-old daughter Stella, parishioners of Our Lady of Grace Parish in Greensburg, stopped by. He was a priest at our wedding before he was Monsignor. <laughs> oh, he's been in our life forever. He's been in our life since he was ordained, so we've known him for a long time. He's a dear friend. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, a traditional farewell celebration was not possible. Cars lined up in the St. James parking lot just for a brief chance to wish him well, despite bitter cold conditions. Bishop Kulik is a classic car enthusiast, and his yearly summer car cruises were a huge draw for the faithful of St. James Parish in New Alexandria, where he was pastor before he was bishop. The moment I got here in February, I think it was one of the first questions I received, where, will there be a car show this year? For the past actually um, eight years, there's been a car show here and it was started by Bishop Kulik when he was named pastor. So this will be our ninth annual car show. This event has brought people together from around the diocese and it's a great opportunity to come spend time with um, other individuals who share that common interest. It's important on, on several different levels, uh, certainly because it, it is a way to help us raise funds to support our ongoing ministry here, but also um, it's important because it brings people together. And that's one of the, the wonderful things that I've sensed already about this parish, just the energy and the enthusiasm, um, certainly around this event that Bishop Pullick did start. This year's St. James Parish Car Show is scheduled for Sunday, September 12th from noon to 4 p.m. Registration begins that day at 11 a.m. Other summer events are being planned across the Diocese of Greensburg. For a list of events and all their details, visit theaccentonline.org. Three of those events are happening right here at Christ Our Shepherd Center, Route 30 in Greensburg. Mark your calendar for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, September 24th, 25th, and 26th. This special weekend begins Friday night, September 24th, with the Friends of Seminarians Dinner, hosted by Father Tyler Bandora, Director of the Office of Priestly Vocations. This Friends of Seminarians Dinner is a way for us as the diocese, specifically uh, the vocation office, to gather these people who have expressed interest in supporting our men who are discerning the priesthood and host them for a dinner just as a way for us to say thank you to them for the support that they show. And like I mentioned, that support comes in so many different ways. We see it by the prayers that are offered by so many people on such a regular basis. The event supports the community of men who are discerning and training as seminarians. Saturday is The Well, the Diocese of Greensburg's Men's Conference. Organizers are planning an outdoor event with featured speakers and workshops, worship and praise opportunities, and a Saturday evening Mass with Bishop Kulik. It is something that really will help you to grow in your faith in ways that perhaps you don't know at the moment. But I, I know I've had conversations with men that say, oh, that's not for me, or I'm not going to share my feelings. Or, it's not about that. It's about coming and just listening. You know, and when you listen, I will tell you from my experience that your heart will be transformed. Sunday is the Roman Catholic Car Cruise to support the Diocesan Missions Office. Gates open at 8 a.m. and kicks off with an outdoor mass celebrated by Bishop Kulik at 11 a.m. If any of these events sound like fun, learn more about them and consider registering. Visit dioceseofgreensburg.org slash summer events. The car crews will support God's work being done by our mission office. Coming up, how a mission trip changed life's outlook for local teens. I'm Robin Mall. You can support mission work by attending a fundraising dinner in October. It features wine and food pairings created by diocesan priests. We'll give you a sneak peek coming up. Adelphi is a great place to build career skills. 
While working in Adelphi, you'll learn how to work with people, manage youth behaviors, and develop communication skills while receiving valuable training and professional development that can advance your career. Adelphi has programs in over 30 counties in Pennsylvania, including residential group homes, foster and adoptive care, education services, and in-home treatment options. If you'd like to be the difference in a child's life, apply today at adelphi.org or call 724-804-7117. Hey, Grandpa, do you want to come to my game this weekend? That'd be too cool. When your hearing loss affects your life and relationships, it's time for a free hearing test at Belltone. Our specialists can thoroughly evaluate your hearing to determine the best solution for you. Are you going to be at my game tonight? Can't wait to see you have a home run. Thanks to Belltone, I can hear my favorite sounds again, and my life feels complete. I am so glad I went to Belltone. Maybe you should, too. You constantly worry about their safety. Then, why aren't you worried about this? We've known the big hits are bad. Now we're learning all those little hits can be worse. Choose Brain Safe Sports. Learn more at stopcte.org. Welcome back to the Accent on Air Summer Event Guide. Bishop Kulik is asking the faithful to consider supporting the Diocese Mission Office this summer. Jordan Whiteco shows us how those donations are put to work. For more than a decade, youth across the Diocese of Greensburg have traveled to nearby Appalachia and other parts of the United States on a mission to better their faith community. COVID-19 may have temporarily halted in-person work, but the tidal wave of need is approaching and local teens are ready to answer the call. So Manus Christi is a week-long service camp in Huttonsville, West Virginia. You're each assigned a family that you're like, you know, helping out with projects in their house usually. Um, so for like three of the days in the, in the trip, you're usually helping a, a person. So we help to put on a new roof on someone's house. We help to redo someone's bathroom so they could repaint it. We had to sand it down and paint it. It was really great especially because a lot of the service was really intimate. Um, you got to meet the people that you were helping and form relationships, and that was really cool. Manus Christi um, basically to me represents being the hands and feet of Christ and use Christ to enlighten others and bring others closer to the Lord. It was something I've always been interested in. I've seen uh, many other people do it, and I truly think that um, one can get happiness by providing others with happiness. I think that because of how much you were reflecting during the week, because of how structured it was to make you pray and reflect, everything that you that you did just seemed more meaningful um, because you knew why you were doing it, um, and it just made the service like it. It was serving in a way that I had never, I had felt like I had never served before, um, just because of how I don't know how, how loving it taught us to be as we were serving. I gained a greater appreciation for the things I had taken granted for before I came to Huttonsboro, West Virginia. Um, I realized how grateful I should be and how I should use the gift that God gave me to help others and be less selfish. I do plan on continuing mission work. I'm actually attending St. Francis University next fall for their PA program. And I know that one of the opportunities on spring break is to go to Ecuador and help, um, you know, medically help people in need. But alongside um, medicine, if you put that aspect to the side, I would be able to take in my Catholic faith and basically fill their lives with faith, be the hands and feet of Christ and show them the hope in a generation that is often lost. The one thing I will say about uh, Manus Christi and mission work in general is that at first it might seem kind of daunting. It might seem uh, scary. Um, you just, you, I don't know, you might kind of go in with some skepticism like, oh, is this really gonna be as fulfilling, as enjoyable? Is it really going to make as big of an impact for the people that you're working with? But like the answer is 100% yes. Being the hands and feet of Christ is something you should be proud of. And you should put that on display for everyone and you should try to change as many lives as possible. If you would like to support the Diocesan Mission Office, log on to dioceseofgreensburg.org and click on giving at the top of the page. Your support is greatly appreciated. 
One way you can support Diocesan Missions is to sponsor or attend the Prayer and Perfect Pairing event in October. On the menu, perfect pairings prepared by priests. Here's a sneak peek. I'm in the kitchen today with Monsignor Riffle and he's cooking up one of his favorite pasta recipes. It's a very simple pasta. It's the arrabbiata sauce, which actually in Italian means angry. And we'll get to why it's angry in just a minute. Okay, so tell us what's in this. The half a cup of olive oil, eight cloves of sliced garlic, and the ring of fire peppers, three 28 ounce cans of San Marzano, whole tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato paste, a quarter cup of parsley, and of course, salt and pepper. We're going to heat the olive oil, and we're going to add two of the ring of fire peppers, because that's really all you need, and garlic. Cut the garlic lengthwise, about the thickness of two quarters. Okay. We're going to first put the oil in, and as I said, this is already infused. We're gonna kick it up a notch, Get the fire extinguisher, here we go. <laughs> Don't worry about the seeds. Well, the seeds make it hotter, correct? They do. So if you want to tone the heat down a little bit, you could just use regular oil and then just add the peppers and the garlic. You could. Okay. These, are, these are noted for their heat, so that's why I chose them. Uh, and besides, it's the peppers the bishop grows and they were free. <laughs> but the whole point of the name of the sauce is angry, so it would not really be a rabiata sauce if you use like mild peppers. What we're gonna do with two thirds of one of the cans is actually to chop it up, which when we put it in the sauce, will give the sauce texture. Okay. The rest of the cans, we're going to puree. So now comes the moment of the blending of all of the flavors. So we're gonna take the sauce off of the stove where it has been simmering between low to medium heat for 45 minutes to an hour. And right before you serve it, you're gonna take a quarter cup of parsley and you're gonna add it to the sauce. Now, what you can do is after you. you get it to your plate, you can put cheese on it. This dish is going to be served at the Prayer and Perfect Pairing event. Registration for the Prayer and Perfect Pairing event can be found at dioceseofgreensburg.org slash missions. Now let's taste it. There's definitely a lot of heat to that. This is delicious. Thanks for inviting us in your kitchen today. And thanks for coming. Thank you. It seems as though Catholic schools had the recipe for educating students during a pandemic. Enrollment increased more than 13%. This year, there's more than four million in tuition assistance available for students who want to attend. When I think about the effect of the pandemic, I think first about the children and the effect that it's had on them, how it has really caused them to live in a different kind of world. It was a very different environment than it has been in the past, but we did provide them with structure. We provided them with classes with the in-person learning or virtual learning if somebody was uncomfortable. But most of all, I think our parents were very happy to have their children come to a place that provided them with some normalcy during the school day. I am very excited about the increase in Catholic school enrollment this year. It is coincidental that just about when we were becoming aware of the COVID pandemic, we were also instituting the top student program. We were funded by a very generous donor who wanted to make sure that any student who wanted a Catholic school education could get one. We try to address each facet of the child in the very best way possible, offering outstanding academics, sports, social opportunities, and most importantly, daily religion class, and I think that makes for a very well-rounded child who becomes aware of the role that they play in honoring God and all that he does for us. On April 8, 2020, the church building of St. Mary of Chestahova, New Kensington, was struck by a tornado, causing extreme damage to the bell tower, steeple, and roof. Monsignor Michael Bagali, who was serving as pastor, oversaw immediate steps to secure the structure. Recently, Bishop Kulik has granted permission for the church building to be restored. 
The new project liaison, Father Ken Zacagnini, will oversee the restoration and become pastor of all three New Kensington parishes in late June. And I want him to have this opportunity to move into the future, to be creative, to be dynamic, to be vibrant. I definitely want to thank Bishop Kulik, who was kind enough, gracious enough to allow this church to be rebuilt, to remain open. Probably what will be new for all of you will be the damage caused to the inside. The inside of the church obviously has been closed off for any public viewing because of safety factors and concerns. You'll see a lot of cracks uh, in the ceiling, uh, plaster that's fallen down at this point. It's my understanding, but I'm no expert, just on what I've been trying to garner so far, that a lot of work will be done on checking to see how secure the plaster is that has not fallen. We're not going to take for granted just the bad spots or the spot you see where plaster has fallen. The, the rest of the plaster will be examined to make sure it is secure. Uh, you'll also notice that the pews have been covered with plastic. The altar has been covered with scaffolding and plastic. Uh, a lot of work was done to protect the altar. Uh, this is a magnificent altar. Hopefully work will be able to get started maybe toward the beginning of June. That would be great. It's hard to say when we would complete the project, but we definitely want to make sure is that everything that is done is done well, properly, and also there's no pressure on workers that would only cause maybe someone to get hurt. In terms of that, I would appreciate it as we travel through this project, if you would pray daily to St. Vincent Fear. Uh, he's a patron saint of construction workers. Uh, just to offer a little prayer to him, and then as the bid package is awarded, to pray that those men and those women are kept safe in this project. In Pennsylvania, there are 14,000 children who have been removed from unsafe situations. While we hope that number stops you in your tracks, we also want to remind you these children are more than a number. There are 14,000 names, stories, fears, hopes, and dreams. They are kids who deserve to know they belong, and the community is here to support them by becoming foster parents. Adelphi Foster Care and Adoption Services is asking for your help to say, I can make a difference. Call us today at 1-800-KID-5928 to learn how. You constantly worry about his safety then why aren't you worried about this? Protect his brain. Prevent CTE. Learn more at StopCTE.org. Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Greensburg is hosting its 19th annual Paul R. Smy Memorial Golf Outing on Friday, August 6th at Ligonier Country Club. Enjoy a day of fun and food on the greens featuring themed holes including the Pope Putt and the Terrific Pierogi Hole. All proceeds to this event provide emergency assistance funds to those in need throughout our diocese. Join us Friday, August 6th at Ligonier Country Club. Sponsorship and ticket information can be found at ccharitiesgreensburg.org. To watch this show and read more about it, visit theaccentonline.org. Thanks for watching.